Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. It is a beautiful late winter day out here in eastern Ontario. I have the countertop that I've been working on in my basement and garage at home that is for the shed transforming into a cabin project. And what I need to do today is I'm going to be using the jigsaw to trim up and get rid of these rough edges on this side of the countertop. And you can also see that I have this fantastic sink here on top of the counter as well. Now again, you guys know me, I went out and I found this online used. I'm gonna say a sink like this goes for 200, I think I picked it up for 40. It's not the perfect sink that I would like for this arrangement that I'm creating, but given the cost, it's a, it's a nice little catch. And uh, I'll be able to put it to good use in this little cabin project that I'm putting together. So because it is a used sink, I no longer have, or the, the kit that I bought does not have the actual template, template for drawing in the, uh, the, the hole that the sink will drop into. So I've got to uh, be a little creative. So what I've done is I'm going to lay it, or I've laid it on the countertop as it is, and I'm going to make some marks, and in some of the areas where I've made the marks, like along here and the sides, I'm going to draw a secondary line a half inch from those marks and that's going to be the line that I cut to. In these areas here where the flange flares out and in the back, I'll take a picture of it and include it here, where it flares out where the faucets would go. In this setup it's not going to have a faucet. Um, I have to pretty much freehand the drawing or freehand the, uh, the cutout. All right, so you can see pretty much the tools I'm going to be using today. Circular saw, brand new, my old uh, jigsaw. So let's get busy, mark this up, and start cutting this hole out. I've made a mark on the outside edge here. I'm going to make a line that's a half an inch in from that mark. So that'll allow for the sink to fall in, allow for the mounting brackets to uh, slide in as well, and uh, all should work out well. As we come around to the back side here, you can see the flange flares out quite a bit. And so what I'm going to do is make a mark. Need to get this plastic out of the way. They put the plastic back in place after they use it, which was nice of them. Keeps the surface clean. But I get that plastic out of the way, and I will be able to make some marks where I'll be able to create a uh, line to cut from. So we're on that side where I want to be, we're on that side. So that's essentially where I want to be. So if I make these marks here, I'm going to cut in, you know, what is that? What is that line? Doesn't need to be very far, quarter of an inch. So we're going to do quarter of an inch over here. We're going to do half inch, half inch where the flange is narrowest down the side and on the front. And so as we come around the corner here, we've got a mark for an inch, and then we've got a mark for an inch and a half, and then that inch and a half mark can then be drawn in to connect there. And same on this side. All right. So quickly, just as a reminder for me, this is half, this is one, this is one and a half, this is a quarter, so that's an inch, that's a half, half. One inch, this is a half, one inch, one inch. So there's the mark there, one half an inch. So inch and a half in from that. This one is in one inch from the mark. So there's pretty much the line as it comes around the corner of the sink. This line doesn't have to be perfect because again it's going to be covered up by the flange. Get a straight edge to line up some of these in a second. This corner here and this corner here, I'm a little bit, I'm going to have to put the sink back on to draw that out.
if you can see it there, that is pretty much the shape I'm going to try to cut out, creating the hole for the sink to drop into. Wish me luck, because I am going to need it, people. Okay, so there are some predominantly straight lines in the shape that I need to cut out here. So for the larger straight lines, I'm going to try to use my skill saw, my circular saw, sorry. And then for the more challenging cuts, I'm going to try to use my jigsaw. Need to turn on the generator. Let's get going. Not sure how well this jigsaw is gonna do, is gonna do with this wood, because this is super hard wood. It's ash. The middle piece is actually maple. Oof. Let's see how this goes. Bingo. Okay, everyone, this is not pretty. It doesn't need to be pretty. The flanges of the sink will cover up the rough edges, if of course they cover those rough edges. Before I bring it over, I just want to clean up this piece right here. Let's grab the sink and see if it falls in there. Ta-da! Oh, I'm pleased with that. God, that's huge sink. See how nice that sink is? They've repackaged it with the cover on. It's got the stopper in it. It's fantastic.
Okay, we're back in my basement working our way to put a coat of this material. If you can see it there. Um, so it goes on very quick. Let it dry for an hour and then you buff it down with just a dry cloth. And then you come back and repeat the, uh, you let that cure for a day. You uh, can hit that, pro you can then hit it with some steel wool, then repeat the process. I do two coats, so it takes me about two days to do it given the curing time. So I've sanded it with uh, 600, then 200 grit, and uh, vacuumed it, wiped it down as well to get as much of the, if any of the uh, particles off it. And uh, so now we'll hit it with the, with this product here. This is a food safe product. And the idea here is to get it good and wet and then come back later, like I said, and wipe it off. Give it an hour and then it says to come back and wipe it off. Do any of you have projects like this on the go at home or uh, a recreation property that you own? Any projects, please share. I'm not any expert at this type of stuff, so anything you guys are doing can uh, help me learn as well. Okay, we're going to let that sit for an hour and then come back and uh, rub it down. Okay, it has been an hour, so now the idea is to wipe this dry. It's going to take some effort here. That's how you do that. That's actually pretty good. So that has to now cure for 24 hours before I put on another coat around this time tomorrow. Fine. Now I'm going to use some very fine steel wool to just smooth out the surface. That's a nice smooth finish. So I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. I've turned some pretty funky pieces of wood. A good uh, couple of ash pieces. I believe this one is a maple in the middle here. And I've turned them into uh, a pretty nice countertop for a little cabin. So that does the trick. I'm going to use this leftover piece of ash to make a mounting bracket for the countertop. You're going to see how I countersink some holes for the screws and then install it on the wall uh, to receive the countertop. Another piece of wood is useful to knock down the burrs on the back side.
I'm back and I've got the countertop. Let's get it inside and see if it fits. Okay, this will be interesting to see how this fits as a first dry fit. That's a really good fit. And so what I'm going to do in the coming hour, hour and a half this morning. Um, probably go ahead and screw it down here in the corners on the side. And maybe over here, a couple places. I'm gonna be screwing it into position in places where trim will cover the screw holes. So that'll look nice. Get a nice little overhang here. Easy to get the drawers down below or the cabinet here. And then I have to sort out what I'm going to do over here underneath the sink. Build out something that covers it. Maybe obviously just, uh, you know, standard cottage fair or cabin fair being some kind of little drape there to uh, cover underneath the sink. Awesome. Looks good. Okay, here's a fun piece to put in. Again, a used sink I picked up on a site here in Canada called Kijiji fits right in there. We've dry fit it before. I'm going to leave this plastic on in here <clears throat> until I've got most of the work done in here. So that's still going to be a while. Now I will line it up where I want it. We'll bring it far forward as we can because we need to be able to get the trim piece in the back there. That's square, and I'll get a screwdriver to get that together. And as you can see right there underneath the edge of the sink, you can see that it's already got the gasket installed. That sink isn't going anywhere. Now the cabinet isn't going anywhere. Perfect. And that's it for today's video. You've seen how I've started with repurposing an IKEA cabinet. How I made a hardwood countertop using elm and maple boards.
and then installed it along with a sink to make a little kitchenette in my off-grid cabin. I hope to be able to use this obviously for lunches, preparing lunches when I'm out here working away in my shop, and or possibly even staying overnight once in a while. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Hope to see you again soon.